Hey everyone, um, reporting live from the car today. Uh, just making it happen. This is real life. So I have our video update for the week and um, really exciting news. This has been a weird week because of the weather, no doubt, and um, lots of sicknesses amongst our team. So I'm hoping that we can round this week out um, end on a great note and start a great week next week. A uh, couple of announcements today. Um, really wanted to recap um, the absence of our management team this week. Very, very important meeting. We had our annual planning meeting um, where we made some really good decisions and some direction for our year of things that we're going to focus on, software updates, equipment updates, um, just really nailing down some processes that are loose and um, sometimes create some issues, focusing a lot on unity between our day and night team and consistency in our services of those two shifts. Um, and then also we talked a lot about our expansion, which is one thing that's really cool. And I know it's something that's on everybody's mind, like, when are we going to get more exam rooms and when are we going to have more space in the call center and um, what are we going to do about growing numbers in doggy daycare and in grooming and all these cool things that we want to um, have some resolution from the expansion. So here's the update. Um, right now, Dr. Andy has moved the plans from the architect to the engineer, which means that we're talking about logistics of our space right now. And that process takes about, um, four to eight weeks depending on how quickly they can move through it and then it goes out for bids for contractors and um, so we're looking at maybe summertime construction and being in our new portion of our addition as soon as September so again that's a loose timeline and another thing that we talked a lot about at our annual meeting was the logistics of having construction going on during our busier part of the year. So we're going to be nailing down some plans, making some workarounds, talking about how to make that happen and still be operational. So don't worry, those things are being taken care of now. And as we get updates, um, we will be sure to share them here, probably in this kind of format or um, maybe even in a personal meeting. Um, so just stay tuned for those things. You really don't have to do anything and you especially don't have to worry, um, but you do have to look forward to it because it's really, really exciting. Um, I'm gonna post in the comments that we have our dental certifications coming up next week. So I'll post in the comments the exact dates and times of those, but that's gonna be our monthly certifications. Remember we skipped December and so we're back on track in January. This month we're talking about uh, dentistry and so this would be a certification for any team member whether you are fluent in that area or whether you've just never even been exposed to it new team member long-term team member um, this is for everybody and so again for attending those you'll not only get certified and have the knowledge that you can share with clients and be better at your job you'll get that little stamp on your profile and um, it looks really really good for you with our company um, just considering long term when we're looking at evaluations and we're looking at your skill set all those things are impactful so do it for the patients, do it for the clients, do it for yourself, do it for the company. It's a great, great certification. Dr. Andy's doing this one, so undoubtedly it'll be very entertaining. Lots of great information. That's definitely one of his passion areas. I know Soldi's involved. That's very much so her passion area as well. So I'm really excited to see that certification come together. Again, check out the notes. Um, we'll probably send out some kind of RSVP type of thing so that we know um, at minimum how many chairs to put out, okay? Um, also, I wanted to talk about payment contracts because I know this has been a little bit confusing. Um, obviously, everybody knows where we stand on them that it's not something that we just offer right off the bat, but it is something that we have to do when we end up with a client who um, is in a bind. Uh, so we have an SOP. I'll also attach that so that you can review it. Just wanted to make sure that you knew the conditions of those. Um, so here's the quick rundown. You still need to read the SOP, but you will need to have them apply for care credit have them apply for scratch and they would have to be denied by both of those things consecutively um, and then there's some things that are not written in the um, the SOP but that you really want to do and that is talk to them about borrowing from family and friends 
interest-free loans are definitely better and it's better for us too if we can get that payment right up front and then just everybody stay focused on the patient care so there's like a phone a friend option in there that they need to do and then ultimately would settle on a um, payment contract those conversations of course need to happen at the time that an estimate's being given if possible um, so that you can have the deposit in mind and not be stuck in a bind having done sometimes even days worth of treatments without having a payment secured. And then another thing that's I think been causing a little bit of confusion is uh, who approves those things. So it definitely does not have to be a manager, but it does need to be the doctor who's involved so that they know that those clients have limited funding, can't afford our services, and so on, whatever the case may be. So again, make sure that you read those and understand care credit, then scratch, then phone a friend, finally settle on a payment contract, okay? Those will be very, very important for you to understand if you're ever in a position to do those. Um, and a lot of times they're unpredictable, so everybody needs to be fluent on those. Um, also, on a serious note, I wanted to talk about equipment. Very, very important to kind of update you guys. Um, if you have a piece of equipment that's not working, a computer, um, diagnostic tool, bathing equipment, I mean anything, any of the things that you use to complete your job in patient care or just your daily routine, that's your equipment, and you have to let somebody know if those things are not working, it's important. And if somebody does know, if you know that you've informed the right people and it's still broken after a day, two days, three days, tell them again. It's really, really important because sometimes the message does not get to where it needs to be or you may have told who you thought was the right person and it was not. So keep repeating yourself. It's really, really important. Um, it's kind of a vow for working for our company that we don't gimp along with anything. We make it happen the right way. Um, kind of bearing no expense uh, uh, of anything. We we don't skip or cut corners in any ways. So you gotta let the right people know about those things when they're broken. Right now, additionally to that conversation of letting people know, we've had some things that are broken that we do know about and that we're disappointed with. So I have to share, those would be especially um, some of our diagnostic equipment like our ophthalmoscopes and otoscopes. Um, and this goes to our nursing team. I really don't think that those are being handled appropriately. We're trying to make some workarounds and find some more sturdy equipment or some preventatives because I know it's nobody's fault, but we have to be really, really cautious with those things. Um, adding to that list, the clippers. I think those pieces of equipment are hitting the floor. They're certainly not being put in drawers or put away properly and they're breaking. And guys, those are really, really expensive. So again, no one person's responsibility because it's everybody's responsibility. So here are our solutions while we work on some long-term solutions. Handle those things with care. We're probably gonna put some foam on the inside of the exam room drawers um, so you can set those down. That's like a two-hand hold, an ophthalmoscope or an otoscope because the, the heads of them are so, so sensitive so that you can put them away appropriately. Um, right after use. You don't need to leave them on the counter they, where they could potentially get knocked down. Um, the clippers, that's the harder one. I would just say make really smart choices. Know that if you set a clipper down on a metal table where there's also a dog or cat who's going to be squirming around during restraint or lifting up, lifting down, don't leave them on the table. Put them on the counter instead so they're less likely to get knocked down. Don't let the cord twist around someone's back or drape off the table in any way. As soon as you're done with it, put them immediately away versus just setting them on the counter because again, we're replacing those. The clippers especially, we've been replacing almost every month and um, it's gonna become unaffordable to do that. So be very cautious, be very respectful of those things. Again, uh, it's everyone's responsibility, whether you're watching it being used or using it yourself, just work as a team to, to do better with those things and um, be very aware. Uh, 
right now, that's all we have. If you have any questions or comments, add them below. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I know that we have a great team member getting married this weekend. That's Alex. So congratulations to Alex. I know um, that everyone's been invited to her wedding. So seems like a company party too. I hope to see everyone there. Have a happy and safe weekend.